My name is Tom Marr, I'm the director of British Home Tutors, and we're here to discuss the impact of video games on the academic performance of pupils. My interest in this topic was triggered some years back when I used to teach uh, Vietnamese students who were normally highly motivated, but after some weeks would begin to display symptoms that I thought were indicative of something more grave, like drug taking or something, and instead it transpired that they were playing a lot of computer games through the night, which greatly derailed academic performance. And from that experience, I've now taken an increased interest in the impact of computer games, and unfortunately I've witnessed a large group of my students who have been derailed because of overplaying and overconsumption of these games, and I think from that I would like to raise awareness about it and perhaps trigger a widespread discussion on its overall impact. Initially there's a, a basic concern as a teacher, as far as I can see it, is that people spend an awful lot of time. I've been forewarned to look out for narcotics, but no one's ever asked me to, to look out for the impact of computer games. So it takes a lot of time, students are exhausted, and that does impact on the classroom. The second concern, that maybe it does affect the way they just learn generally, that they are looking for an immediacy of response which they have had cultivated from playing these games repeatedly. And there is some work done by the likes of Susan Greenfield in, in Neuroscientist in Oxford, which says that it does affect attention spans. Now she does cite the, the use of Ritalin and the way it's being prescribed left, right and centre nowadays as evidence of this. Now that maybe we over-prescribe Ritalin, maybe there's no correlation between Ritalin and the use of computer games. There, there is the concern that pupils who have been brought up on a diet of the immediacy and the very strong um, visual sensory stimuli of computer games will have different attention spans than the way I mean, my generation, who are not accustomed to these games, would have had. So I feel sorry for the poor traditional teacher with you know, the, the patches on his arms and tweed jacket and a bit of chalk who's trying to teach them in a, in a traditional manner and find that his audience really are expecting something much more immediate, something that they can control. And what these games allow people to do, as soon as they are bored, they can quickly you know, change the frame onto something that bores them less or offers the possibility of boring them less. And that, that is a problem I think traditional teaching is now going to face in the classroom. And then finally, a much more far-reaching concern, maybe that it is changing generally the way we do research, that we are kind of much more screen-based in the way we look for information and knowledge. Information that comes very, very easily, but not always of a very high quality, as we've seen with, say, the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, how we had groupthink behaviour. No one really got behind the information that came through the monitors and actually you know, investigated what was actually happening on the ground. And most research theses are often done now just cut and paste jobs from the internet. You know, any university will tell you that. So there may be a, a, a more widespread concern that how we go about getting knowledge is now being undermined by new levels of technology of which computer games have an important role to play. What can we do about it? Um, well, we, we know it's a 60 billion dollar industry per year and growing. More will be spent on video games in 2011 than will be spent on books. It already exceeds the, the movie industry. So we're, we're talking about a very formidable industry here that has very strong commercial backing. I don't expect it to disappear. I don't expect it to shrink. I think it will grow. But I think it will have to make adjustments in the way that other industries have had to make adjustments. I would take the analogy of junk food or other industries that economists might describe as market failure where something is just being overproduced and overconsumed beyond what would be socially desirable. There are already um, policy initiatives taken in other countries. China, for instance, have now brought in legislation that you know, people when it plays for more than three hours, the game is now automatically cut out in internet cafes if the registered user is under 18. I'm not proposing draconian regulation. I think my first inclination is to try to heighten the awareness and information in the same way as we've tried to heighten the information awareness about other demerit activities and say, okay, overconsumption of this may not be in your child's best interests, and the child may not be the best person to judge what's in the self-interest. And moving on from that, you'd say, well, maybe there is scope to have a better debate with this industry, with the Nintendos of the world, with the Microsoft, and say, you're making an awful lot of money, but at the same time, you are damaging certain 
percentage of your consumers. There's very little doubt about that. It probably just hasn't been accurately quantified as yet. And then thirdly, I think school policy has to really um, take this on board. They've got too much of an obsession with the, the traditional bads, the, the drugs, the women, the narcotics. And really this is something that is derailing more students than the traditional bads were. And now I'm not suggesting uh, you know, a ban on computer games, I would think it's unimplementable, but I think parents have to be just more aware of potential dangers and try to ensure that most of these games are being played where they are kind of visible, you know, in the living room as opposed to the bedroom. What's going on at weekends and boarding schools and wet days with sports and music now marginalised is a very fertile environment for people to develop what some people might consider an addiction to these games. So I think those would be the policies I would wish to go down first before thinking of something more draconian. Clearly this is an industry that's going to expand and I think various constituencies will have to make an adjustment. I think that Parents will have to become more aware of it and their children's vulnerability. I think schools will have to become aware of it. And even the industry itself will have to consider their content a bit better. And I hope that this talk will be able to contribute to that discussion.